Hello friends, welcome to USMLE team. Today I am going to talk about malignant carcinoid syndrome. Before starting this, I would request you to subscribe to our channel that is All On On Law and please do not forget to tell your friends about our channel. Right now I will be discussing the important points related to USMLE CK and Step 3. So try to concentrate on this. This is an important topic for USMLE examination. Let me start with this. The malignant carcinoid syndrome is the constellation of symptoms typically exhibited by the patient with metastasis from carcinoid tumor. Carcinoid tumors are usually secrete excessive amounts of hormone serotonin. So serotonin is the hormone that is increased in a patient suffering from carcinoid syndrome. Carcinoid tumors arise from the neuroendocrine cells which are widespread in the human body especially in the organs derived from the primitive intestine. Okay, so these are the important points. You might think of when, it, when I tell about the carcinoid syndrome you think of uh, diarrhea, flushing, tachycardia and hypotension. These are the four important symptoms you should know about. Um, okay so th th there may be a rash from uh, niacin deficiency okay uh, that's also a very important point when these tumors spread to the liver patients usually begin to develop malignant carcinoid syndrome in fact this syndrome develops when vas vasoactive substances produced by the carcinoid tumor escape hepatic de degradation and gain access to the systemic circulation carcinoid Carcinoids arising in the stomach are usually associated with a low gastric acid production, a condition termed hypochlorohydria, achlorohydria. These tumors rarely become malignant and never metastatize, but they sometimes produce histamine. So look at the feature. If the carcinoid tumor arises from a different place, they have a little bit different clinical features. Carcinoid tumors arising in the lung generally produces serotonin, gastrin, ACTH and histamine. Look at the features. Carcinoid tumors grow slowly and symptoms may not occur for several years if at all. When symptoms do develop, they are ill-defined and may be neglected for a long time before being properly diagnosed. In some cases, carcinoid tumors present as acute appendicitis or a chronic pain in the lower right abdominal quadrant. Okay guys, so when symptoms do develop, they are ill-defined and may be neglected for a long time before being properly diagnosed. In some cases, carcinoid tumors present as acute appendicitis or a chronic pain in the lower right abdominal quadrant. So this is the history that my, uh, that USMLE examination may ask you, may, ga may give you to diagnose this disease. So try to link the symptoms, very important. For this reason, the condition is frequently misdiagnosed as an irritable bowel syndrome. Alcohol intolerance, weight loss also may occur, may be associated manifestation. Severity of the symptoms varies, onset of symptoms may be spontaneous or may be precipitated by, subter by certain foods and the beverages, example alcohol. Pharmag sorry, pharma pharmacological agents that's the drugs, physicals and the emotional stress. Diarrhea is the common as is the flushing of the face and the neck. That's very important. If they give the history of a patient with a diarrhea and a flushing, to try to remember, try to think of carcinoid syndrome first. These manifestation, manifestations results from a tumor tumoral hormone production. However, even if a carcinoid tumor produces these molecules, some patients do not experience any symptoms. Right heart problems may develop because the tricuspid valve is stenosed by the serotonin action, causing shortness of the breath after a few years. So look at these, they can come with a heart failure, they can come with the symptoms of uh, breathlessness. The other common problems include asthma, wheezing, dyspnea, and palpitation. The low blood pressure, fatigue, dizziness, asthenia, uncommon symptoms like myopathy, 
arthritis, arthralgia, irritability, aggression, and a lack of impulse control. These have been linked to linked with low levels of plasma tryptophan and presumably with low brain serotonin. Flushing is a phenomenon of a transient vasodilatation causing reddening of the face and the head, neck and the upper chest and epigastric areas. Flushing is the most frequent symptom and may be brief, example for a 2 to 5 minutes or may last for even several hours, usually in later stages of the disease. Flushing may be accompanied by the tachycardia while the blood pressure usually falls and does not change. Malignant carcinoid syndrome is a not a cause of sustained hypertension, is a not a cause of sustained hypertension or rise in the blood pressure during flushing is rare. In addition to the cutaneous vasodilatation, some patients also develop telangiectasia primarily on the face and the neck, which is most marked in the malar area. Intestinal obstructions may result from the primary tumor or from the sclerosing reaction in the surrounding mesentery. Necrosis of the hepatic tumor masses may produce a typical acute syndrome with fever, abdominal pain and tenderness. Okay, so before going to this, uh, I would like to tell you about the uh, physical examination. The physical examination, what you see on examination of the chest, um, you may see the pulmonary pulmonary systolic and uh, diastolic heart murmur could be present okay uh, sometimes can be a tricuspid insufficiency also and the um, the other thing what i would like to tell you hepatomegaly can be there because of the metastasis so these are the important points you should know about uh, this carcinoid syndrome so what are the tests you gonna do? Uh, the tests are uh, you should major urinary 5-hydroxy indoleacetic acid level 5-U-H-I-A-A -A level okay this is a serotonin metabolite the following food contains an amount of serotonin that can produce abnormally elevated excretion of urinary 5-H-I-A a a after ingestion why you should know because if you are in confused with it, because the patient will eat these one of these food and they will come up with the diarrhea and uh, flushing so you get confused and you should ask about the history that's very important so the food are spinach eggplant cheese wine caffeine tomatoes kiwi fruit bananas walnuts pineapples uh, red plums, avocado. Okay, the measurement of other bioactive amines like serotonin, catecholamines, histamine, histamine metabolites in the platelets, plasma, and urine of the patient with the carcinoid tumor is of the interest but has less diagnostic value than an assay of the major metabolite of serotonin in the urine. So, there are other tests also, but the best test and very cheap is. Uh, uh, major metabolite of serotonin compared to other tests of this uh, disease. In in hand gut, carcinoid tumors, chromogranin A, alpha HCG, beta HCG, and PP must be included in the following up follow up study. For lung carcinoid, gastrin, ACTH, growth hormones, alpha and beta HCG are helpful, and the levels of urinary 5-HIAA, chromogranin, and tachykinins are useful in mid gut carcinoid tumors. So try to memorize this. This is important table for USMLE step one. The rest are important for USMLE step three. So how do you treat it? The best drug for this is uh, octreotide. That is the best option for this. So what you need to do? Uh, diagnose this disease correctly on the basis of the history. Uh, do the invest investigation urinary 5 HIAA level. Then uh, treat with the octreotide. If uh, octreotide level of uh, if the treatment fails with the octreotide, um, surgery can be done. Okay. Okay, guys, I just go through once and thank you so much uh, for watching my video. Uh, take care. See you soon in the next video with me on USMLE team. We are uploading more and more videos. Thank you.